with us. We have the Mayor Dunkirk, A.J. Doltz. A.J., welcome to the program. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. We got through last weekend's windstorm mm -hmm. and uh, some lake effect snow. No major problems to report in the city. Nope, nothing. Nothing severe. Now, the city is getting closer to beginning work on a major waterline project. I know this has uh, been in the works for many months, but tell us how this project is progressing. Uh, very nicely. Uh, we're getting towards the last step, and construction will be starting uh, shortly. Uh, this is part of our consent order, uh, this project here, uh, which makes it uh, very vital. Um, that we get this last uh, step accomplished. At our next council meeting, the March 20th meeting, uh, representatives from Hill Engineering will be on uh, to answer any questions from council uh, because we'll be asking council to act on that final step, which is uh, approving the financing. So that's, that's the last step. Uh, we need the financing approved, and then uh, Mark Woods can go ahead and, and go out for the money and and move on. Now the contractor has been chosen, right? Yes. Yeah, that was that happened at the last uh, process. That was the second step in uh, when bids were all open. I believe it's St. George. How How is the overall project going? How is the city? Is the city making some progress on some of these issues that were defined under the consent order? Yeah, last week I, I met with representatives from Hill Engineer and uh, Tony Cugino. And um, we went over everything, and, and everything's on target. Um, we had um, a little issue with, with wetlands um, when we were doing the Willowbrook storage tank. And apparently, if you take a bit away, you have to give, I believe it's four times that amount. So we did find some, uh, Tony, I should say, found some spot, a spot um, on the old Marsh Valve site. Uh, so we're, we're set there. We we're doing the legal paperwork this past week. and. Um, should have that clarified so the Willowbrook tank can start to be improved. Um, the money has already been allocated for that as part mm -hmm. of the phase one bonding. Nothing is ever easy on uh, doing anything because of various guidelines are really out of the, the control of the city. That's right, yeah, there's, there's always hurdles to jump through. Now, I also want to ask you about the problem of stolen shopping carts. I know mm -hmm. this was addressed at the last Common Council meeting. Uh, the police chief, David Orlano, uh, working with uh, two area businesses. Tell us a little bit this problem I can remember when I started here back in the early 90s. <laughs> it, it's been a problem that has been around for decades. It sure has. And, uh... It, it, it originated with a phone call, I believe, from Gary D'Amico to Chief Ortolano. He asked for a meeting, um, or actually, I, I remember uh, running into him and the, Mr. D'Amico in December, and he said, uh, and, you know, after the first year, after the things settled down, we'll, we'd like to come in and talk to you about the shopping carts. I said, wonderful, and they came in one day, and within a half hour, it was pretty much, you know, needing the go-ahead for Mr. D'Amico, and uh, the gentleman from Save a Lot, and you know, they they basically said this has gone on long enough. It's we're tired of picking up our carts. Uh, the gentleman from Save a Lot basically said he picks up forty or so a week, um, and and they gave us the okay to start uh, prosecuting. In fact, I can recall this was a problem going back to the days when there was a Bell supermarket there. I mean, that's going back. It, it has been a problem, and I, I, I don't think anyone's to blame for no. it, except those who are causing the problem to uh, begin with. Yeah, and you know, it's just one of those things where, you, you know, you're, you're trying to clean up your city, and, you know, the, there's other options. You know, the, the pole carts are... You know, about twenty dollars. I think they'll be priced at, and um, you know, those those would be a good use of, or a good way to to get your groceries home. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not we're not looking to out there, but enough's enough. You know, we, we there's shopping carts all over the city, and you know, the public has definitely had enough of it. Uh, the store owners have had enough of it, and as we talked about in the meeting, it, you know, taking a shopping cart off. Off locations is no different than you know taking uh, steaks, you know, mm -hmm. or any other goods. It's, it's stolen merchandise. So, 
So the police will begin to enforce this on April 1st? April 1st. Um, I know the store owners have had signs posted uh, for quite some time, uh, especially Save-A-Lot, saying it's, you know, you're not allowed to take the carts off, off site. So April 1st will be the day. They've been educating their customers. Why don't we touch a, a little bit on the boardwalk market since uh, in a couple of months, uh, hopefully uh, the boardwalk market will be reopening for mm -hmm. business. And is the city and uh, the development department looking at making some changes in, in the way the boardwalk operates in the selection process? I guess kind of clarify what is being looked at. Sure. Basically, what we were doing is, is my administration was getting ready for the for the festival season and the, and the boardwalk and all that. And I also want to stress, we're looking to have the boardwalk be more than just a short season. And we're, we're looking for ways to make this uh, more than just four or five months of, of activity. We really want to stretch it out as long as possible. I believe one business is, is open now. I believe Blind Tiger is, is open on a on a part-time basis at, at the moment. But saying that, what we look to do is, all right, what are the terms of the lease? And let's basically just, just clear this up. Um, we had a lot of questions as to how the processes um, or what the processes were. Figured those out and then went from there. Basically, you know, all we're looking to do, and we, we met with the, I met with the tenants uh, along with Mark Woods and Tony Cugino last week. Um, in our development department. All we're looking to do is set up some things that were already in the lease. Um, those that use water will pay for water. Um, everybody will, if they don't use water, then they won't pay for water. You know, it's that, it's, it's that really that basic. Uh, everyone will, will pay a tipping fee, um, just like our, our residents do, um, because we pick up the trash uh, mm -hmm. at least six days a week. So. And we'll, we'll do the recyclables for them on Monday, you know, just like the rest of the city. So um, we're not out there to, to get anybody. You know, I, the message I had to the tenants was, you know, we're, we're looking forward to working with you. We're not here to punish anybody, but, but the city is subsidizing the facility. And we're looking to work together to find ways to, to close that gap a bit and make sure we're being as, as efficient as possible, um, you know. There, there's all sorts of, you know, I know there's a lot of debate out there as far as how the boardwalk is perceived, but, you know, basically we're having the dialogue now mm -hmm. and we're looking to make the improvements um, wherever we can and have a nice working relationship uh, with the tenants. Now, are the same tenants going to be down there or is that process mm -hmm. still being worked out? That process is still being worked out. Um, I can say we have seven of the eight for sure. Okay, so the vast majority of them are committed. Are, There's still, we're still working through um, one. Okay, so uh, you hope to have it filled, and uh, are you, as far as extending the use uh, mm -hmm. time-wise, are, are you hoping to start doing that in the coming year? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're you know, going to do what we can, you know, and, and we're stressing that. And the tenants, uh, the ones we've talked to have said they really want to work amongst themselves to promote it because we're very short-staffed in the development department. Uh, Steve and Tim are, and Ashley, and we have an intern, Travis, they're, they're constantly busy working, working hard. They don't have the time to commit to doing a lot of the boardwalk promotion. Um, obviously, we'll work with them. We'll we'll do everything we can. We're still going to have the two festivals, the weekly music on the pier, but we're asking the tenants to to work amongst themselves uh, to to promote the facility. Um, they have their own little you know tenant association um, where they're hoping for the full participation so they can raise some marketing funds and and get their themselves out there. Uh, one of the changes we also made was um, some of the leases were locked in um, from from previous administration, so but instead of having the seasonal rates, you know, a higher rate mm -hmm. and a lower rate, um, we're making it a flat rate each month. So you know, if your rent's thirty six hundred for the year, we're gonna have you pay three hundred every month instead of a, a varying rate. Um, mm -hmm. We're really hoping and we're really encouraging the the businesses to stay open longer.